Hey everybody, so today we are going to be going through how to make a taxonomy without having to use the word taxonomy, without having to go through any of the complicated rules about a taxonomy, and also not really having to leave your house for any of the materials because most of these materials you can find in your house today, in your junk drawer or that box where you just throw things. The other thing is this is something that you can do with individuals or entire teams. You can also do this with many different age groups. I have done this to uh, show my nieces and nephews what I do for a living. I have used this with Girl Scouts to help train them on you know, the foundations of data science. And I've also used this to teach a CEO what a taxonomy is and why it's important to our business. And it is a very useful tool to show people not necessarily the code and the lingo, but the logic and the methodology behind making a good taxonomy or making sure that something is organized well. It's also a method that you can use to determine what kind of taxonomy, what kind of model you are really wanting to use. And best of all, there is a giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that as well as watching part two of this video where we will take this taxonomy and we will build it out as an ontology or a general knowledge representation because again, you don't need to use the jargon. It's really an exercise in organization. So this is a great way to walk through that logic and to test out how your organization actually thinks about that organization to make yourself effective. And so with that, let's go have some fun. All right, so we are going to start off with which method of classification or categorization are you going to focus on? Walking through these different types helps your participants understand the different ways that things can be organized. So to make your kit, you're going to want to have some yarn or embroidery floss or some kind of string, some scissors to cut that string, an ample supply of index cards, I actually have upgraded myself since this video. Now I use some reusable, they're sort of like dry erase marker kind of uh, index cards so I'm not wasting as much paper. Uh, also two to three different colors of stickies and this is to make sure that we can color code our subclass and classes later in the exercise. And for the kit itself, you can do anything you want with the kit as far as um, items that you use, but keep in mind you want to think about all of your senses, all of the different ways that people want to group something together, and that's how you should select the things that you're going to use in your kit. For me, I used things that were different sizes, different shapes, different colors, different feels, different smells. Uh, different uses. There's a lot of different ways that you can put your kit together. I also have a whole description of the specific things I used in my kit below if you want to copy what I have done. Now that you have your kit, you need to start to fill out some of your index cards pertaining to whatever topic you are going to be organizing around. In my case, I have selected a pizza parlor. You can also select something like ice cream or wine or a hardware store, anything that is thematic and that a lot of people are going to understand and has a lot of options. So I have used pizza and ice cream the most amongst anything else that I've used to great success. Now you want to go through and think logically if I was making a pizza, what are some of the first steps I would need to figure out. I would need to understand what size of pizza, maybe what kind of dough, uh, perhaps what kind of toppings I would be interested in, what kind of sauce. Those are all ways that you can start to fill out your cards before you do your exercise. Or you could cheat like I did and go to your local Domino's website and just copy down some of the items that they have to make it easier on yourself. Also make sure that you have a lot of empty index cards because those are the cards that your uh, participants are going to be able to write in additional ingredients or additional dough types so that they can fill out the taxonomy and the taxonomy terms as you go through this exercise. 
right, so let's get this party on the road. So you're going to break everybody out into groups and this can be digital or physical. And you're going to explain what the purpose of this exercise is, which is to understand uh, how information can be organized. You are then going to give everybody the very first prompt, and that is to dump everything from the kit out on the table and really survey what they have available to them and ask them to think about how would you organize these, and that's where you start. Okay, and when everyone is in the process of organizing, make sure to ask the question, why do the pencils and the markers go together? Or why do the scissors not belong with the puffy poofs? Or if you're doing this with a pizza taxonomy, why would anyone care about the type of sauce that you have? It should all be the same, right? Well, maybe not. It's walking through that logic that actually makes this exercise really helpful for people that are data people and as well as people that don't know much about data at all. We all organize as people and understanding that logic is a big part of this. Chose type as the very first method of the madness. And now I'm going to be going through and looking at color. This one is going to take a little bit more time. It's also a little bit more subjective. As you can see, those purples and those pinks, well, are they the same? Are they slightly different? The blues, is there a lighter blue, a darker blue? Understanding those variations as people are doing their organization is something to keep asking and also ask penetrating questions. You can see that I put some tans and some whites together. Okay, is, is there a reason for that? What benefit would there be to an end user if they were looking for something in the color category? Next up is something I would call t-shirt size. So small, medium, large, extra small. Is there extra, extra long? Is there wide? Those kinds of measurements are pretty subjective. They are commonplace in uh, things that you wear on your body or your shoes or your hats or even your purses, those types of things. But how would you do this with other types of items? Walking through this one is going to be interesting because it's also generalized. And this is something that participants usually have a big struggle with, but it's also a good way of teasing out how they think about this category. Now I'm going to be looking at the shape. Again, this is still somewhat of a generalization because you can have explicit shapes that are exact measurements from inches to centimeters to millimeters, or maybe you're looking at the diameter or the circumference or the mass of something. But in this case, I am going with our elementary school. Is it oblong? Is it circular? Is it some kind of square or rectangle? Now, what is the difference between size and shape? Definitely ask this if either of these come up because normally people can squish these together as the same thing, but as you can see here, they can be used in very distinct ways. And we're gonna finish up with one of the most common ways people organize things, and that is use. The thing is, use is very different for each person. You can't really guess why somebody is going to be using something, but this is something that you definitely want to talk to your participants about because it is one of the most common ways people try to organize things and having them realize that not everyone organizes according to use. And you can do that by asking them to individually organize the kit for their uses. You can see how they're different. And that is something you really want to highlight. Now we're into part two, and this is actually creating that taxonomy and making that organization. So you're going to pick which out of all the methods that you came away with that you as a group want to focus on. In my case, I selected type. You usually want to find something that is going to be, has a lot of options depending on which main use case that you selected. In my case, that is pizza. All right, so now let's get into the taxonomy. So you want to first get all of the cards that you pre-selected and get those laid out. So again, you survey what is at your disposal. People can get a feel for what kind of taxonomy this is. We are focused on type. So I usually think through the logic, like if I'm making a pizza, what do I need to start with? Probably the pan size. Well, that means I need to know what size of pizza that I'm looking for. Maybe what kind of dough, what kind of sauce, toppings. Topping is 
is going to be a very rich area because there's a lot of different variety within toppings if you're doing pizza or ice cream. And if people start to get stuck, then you can use this method that you're seeing on the screen here where you take individual terms and you start to build those out into buckets of like-minded things. As those buckets come together, you'll see more and more specificity that you can get out of them until you have a working taxonomy model. You may also identify things that are missing. So in this case, regular type dough was missing. So add that to a card and add it to the bucket. Now here's an example of refinement. Originally I thought sauce was something that would also contain barbecue sauce, but after a while I noticed that there was a lot of salad dressing or dipping dressings. So maybe that's another category that I didn't anticipate having, but now it makes more sense. As anticipated, toppings is pretty diverse. So I started to put them into larger groupings. Again, that whole bucketing approach. Started with vegetables and meats and different cheeses. And I started to then refine. So you see that chicken also has buffalo chicken. And I created subcategory cards so that I could organize them better. Again, with that rationale, how would an end user be able to drill down into the topics that they are the most interested in and explore those decisions? For instance, are mushrooms a vegetable or are they a substitution for meat? That's a decision you have to make when you are creating a taxonomy. Now, you might come across some things that you don't know where they belong, like cheese sticks. Where does that belong? Just set those aside for now because that's going to be another conversation later. Now, disagreements are going to come up and that's great because you're going to have different opinions and really highlight how many different people use organization, especially taxonomy, in different ways and work through how you can meet the needs of all users as you go through this exercise. The other thing is you're going to start to color code. You can use one color for the higher level categories and then another color for the subcategories. Now, this is really just to give a visual interpretation of how the taxonomy might be displayed, but it's also going to be important when we start to talk about how these different things are related to one another, the way that you may perhaps build out a knowledge graph or an ontology. Also make sure you ask, how are they deciding the labels that they are putting on the stickies? Because that's a big part of taxonomy. What is it that is going to really impact your user when you see it? So you'll see I've put fruit and toppings and, and meat and, and dipping sauces and those types of things. Well, are those the right labels? This is a great time to talk about user testing because so far you're just working from the collective hive mind of the people that you are working with in this moment but you definitely wanna go and talk to your customers at the end of the day when you finally have a working model. You'll notice sometimes I have cards turned sideways. That just means that that is a third level deep. Again, that's a great place to talk about how deep is too deep or how deep do you need to be to be effective with your taxonomy. And now to the miscellaneous pile. We don't normally wanna keep a miscellaneous pile a general or other category, but those that are not already in the taxonomy profession or information architecture profession don't typically think that way. Hence why you probably had a junk drawer <laughs> to start this video. We all kind of throw things that you don't know what to do with in one central location. So this is where you really wanna talk about where do these things belong? Are they really necessary? What is the value of having these options? If they are super critical to making your pizza a bang up job, then you probably should add it and you should make a category for it and maybe try to build it out more since it's of such high value. If it doesn't have a lot of value or maybe you don't understand the value today, that means maybe just keep it aside and as you continue your work you can look back at that and when you're building out your uh, pizza delivery service you can ask yourself do I need that and if you do find that you need it then bring it back in 
All right, and that is the end of our taxonomy journey, at least for now. Make sure as you're going through this process, you are documenting those decision points, any clarifications that you all came away with, some ideas for your current taxonomies or your future taxonomy works, and especially anything that has anything to do with relationships because that's gonna come in video number two. Make sure at the end of this exercise that you save each of these piles for the second part of this video. All right, you made it to the end of the video. Yay! As a big thank you for everybody that has been supporting this channel by watching things, liking things, you know, overall subscribing, um, I wanted to do a giveaway. So you saw the kit that I put together in this video. You will also get a kit very similar with all kinds of odds and ends that you can use for this organizational task, as well as reusable and erasable cards so that you don't have to continue to use um, paper index cards. So if you are interested in that, please make sure to like, make sure you are subscribed and put something in the comments below saying that you are interested in this giveaway and I will reach out to you. And with that, I wanna thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know how you liked it, anything that you have experienced. If you do try this out, I would love to hear your stories. So with that, thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.